Hello and welcome to Spectrum 360, your destination for Full Circle University at Buffalo News. I'm Aaron Mansfield. And I'm Lisa Corey. It was quite an eventful week for the UB community. Leading off today's newscast, the UB men's basketball team had a crucial victory Saturday. The Bulls clinched at least a share of the Mid-American Conference East regular season title. The Spectrum's Ben Tarhan and I were at Alumni Arena for all the action. Reporting for Blue Shirt and Gray Suit Day at Alumni Arena, I'm Aaron Mansfield here with Ben Tarhan, where the UB Bulls just earned another crucial victory in the Mid-American Conference, besting Miami, Ohio, particularly with an exceptional second half. Ben, what changed from first half to second? It was really the Bulls' shooting in the second half that was the difference in this game. They came out in the first half, they shot about 40% from the field, 40% from three. and the second half, they were up around 70% for most of the half and finished around 68% in both categories. That was really the big difference in the game. Also, very balanced scoring for the Bulls today. Josh Freelove had a career-high 24 points. Javon McCray, another great game, 13 points, 10 rebounds. Gerard Oldham, 11 points. Shannon Evans, 9 points, 8 assists. Will Reed in 10 points. Just an extremely balanced stat sheet. I think it's as good as, as we played at uh, both ends of the floor in the second half of the game. Uh, you know, obviously led by what Josh was able to do, scoring 21 points in the second half. and. You know, obviously hitting a bunch of big three-point shots, really energized our team. Ben, what did you learn from today's game? I learned in the way they played in the second half was, was uh, the way they need to play the rest of the season. And I learned that if they're going to go ahead and challenge for a MAC tournament championship, they can't play the way they did in the first half coming out flat like that. They need to play the way they did in the second half of the entire game. Of course, uh, the second half starts and, you know, we're okay early in the half and then they go on a run and, and we never answered any run they were able to make. Um, Free Love hit some tough, tough threes and they're able to get some uh, balls into the paint and able to score also that way. And and the Bulls are in position to earn a triple bye if they win out competing against MAC West contenders, Western Michigan and Toledo. Ben, what's next for this team? Uh, up next on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. is a rematch with Akron from an earlier game here at Alumni Arena this year where the Bulls defeated Akron 96 to 90. That's going to be their most difficult game coming on the stretch. This weekend was, of course, huge for the Bulls, as it was for another group on campus. For the second year in a row, the Indian Student Association won International Fiesta, one of the Student Association's biggest annual events. Our Joe Conzi was at the Center for the Arts for the competition. We're here at the Center for the Arts, the site of the 2014 International Fiesta. First place going to Indian Student Association, taking home their second trophy in two years, telling the story of the Taj Mahal. Meg, we saw a lot of raw emotion tonight in front of a packed house here. Talk a little bit about the performance. What drew you to it? We did. ISA put on a completely captivating performance. Everyone on that stage was in sync with each other. The colors were incredible. The audience were really going for it. It was really something else. They completely deserved to win. Um, myths and folklores in Indian culture. The problem is, is a lot of our stories are very long epics and through traditional dancing it takes around like 15 to 20 minutes to tell those stories and do it justice also. Falling behind Indian Student Association was Malaysian Student Association and third place to the Japanese Student Association. No words can describe how happy and just happy, like we've been practicing really, really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And we've been not placing at all. This is the first time, so it means a lot, a lot to us. Yeah, we're very excited. Um, we started practicing last semester, probably right before Thanksgiving break, and it's been nonstop ever since. As soon as we got back from uh, this semester, it's literally been every night for at least two or three hours, so we're exhausted, but we're very, ha very happy that we got third. Yeah, I was actually really surprised myself. Um, I did not expect this many people to come today. I know International Fiesta is very popular amongst the years, but um, yeah, I was like, wow. Like, you know, when I went out to give out the greeting, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is crazy right now. Like, I was stunned. First place going to the Indian Student Association, taking home their second title in two years, followed by second place, Malaysian Student Association, third place, the Japanese Student Association, That'll do it here from the CFA for the 2014 International Fiesta. I'm Joe Conzi Jr. And I'm Megan Wheel. Back to you, Aaron and Lisa. Thanks, Joe. 
Congratulations to the Indian Student Association. I have to say, International Fiesta is one of my favorite events on campus. I agree, and I thought that all the clubs did a great job of conveying their distinct cultures. Also at the CFA last week, two influential leaders in the civil rights movement spoke during the fourth installment of this year's Distinguished Speaker Series. The Spectrum Sam Fernando had an opportunity to sit down with them before the event. On Wednesday, a thousand people filed into the Center for the Arts to listen to civil rights activist Diane Nash and Mary Frances Berry. It was the fourth installment of this year's Distinguished Speaker Series. The women were pivotal figures in the civil rights movement and were even in prison for their activities. Both worked with many presidents and were personal friends of Martin Luther King Jr. Barry and Nash spent the evening stressing the idea that people have the power to impart major changes in society, much more than government can. I spoke with the two civil rights activists before the event. Suppose we had waited for elected officials to desegregate restaurants and lunch counters and interstate buses and get the right to vote in the South. I am very afraid that now, 50 years later, we'd still be waiting. Barry and Nash still think there's a lot to do to achieve social justice. Barry even said, it's never going to be over. Life is too dynamic. Back to you, Lisa and Aaron. It was great to see such inspirational leaders on UB's campus, and the Spectrum tries to find people in UB's own faculty and students who are making an impact on others. Our Karen Baruch has the story of one such student. Hi, I'm Karen Baruch reporting for the Spectrum. Today I'm here with Megan Rosen, treasurer of UB's Colleges Against Cancer chapter. We're here to discuss Relay for Life, the chapter's main event of this year. So Megan, what inspires you to be a part of Relay for Life? Um, the biggest reason I joined uh, UB's College Against Cancer and wanted to be involved in Relay for Life was because of my grandfather, Seymour. Um, he passed away in 2002 from prostate, skin, and lung cancer. Megan spends time studying in Starbucks and handing out flyers in the student union in order to make sure her passion is fulfilled. This year's Relay for Life event starts on April 11th at 6 p.m. in Alumni Arena and goes until 6 a.m. on April 12th. Megan hopes to see everybody there to help support and fight against cancer. You can check out Karen's whole interview with Megan on ubspectrum.com. And for the latest happenings on campus, be sure to pick up the Spectrum's print edition every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We also post all of our content on our website, including articles, videos, and podcasts. And don't forget to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter for up-to-date news. That's all we've got for you today. Thank you for watching Spectrum 360, and we look forward to seeing you right back here next time.